In our video today, we're going to explore how to simplify a complicated scene. In this case, we're going to do a couple of thumbnail sketches to start out. That'll help work out the basic shapes, the basic light shadow pattern, and help us to clarify our overall idea or concept for this painting. So in my sketchbook, I often will draw a rectangle in the approximate proportions of the canvas that I'm planning to paint on. In this case, I'm going to do two sketches. This is the first version. And as you'll see when, you, when I start the painting, uh, I ended up deciding on a square format. I kept struggling with the equal division of space between the water and the land. And as you can see, I did two similar compositions, moving the trees around a bit and experimenting with a little bit more foreground or a little bit less. And you'll see when I do the drawing on the canvas that I'm working with a square canvas and I've changed all of these proportions a bit. But these two sketches really helped me kind of figure out what I actually wanted to do, what, what I felt was important to the scene. And here are those two sketches, as you can see, quite different. Here's the panel I chose. It's a square panel, approximately 10 by 10 inches and I'm just making sure that I have it clamped firmly in the easel because I plan to use some bold brush techniques for this a la prima painting. Now I'm drawing directly on the canvas and just thinking about the placements of the big shapes. You know, of course this is the shoreline uh, and then I'm going to establish the, the, the foreground cluster of rocks and bushes here. And uh, now we'll speed up the video. And you can see that my main thought at this point is really just placement of the trees and establishing the main big shadow shape. And you can see I, I barely indicated where the shadow would be. I really wanted to get some clean color down for the trees and so I didn't want a heavy layer of shadow color on the canvas yet. I wanted to kind of keep the lights very clean and unmuddied. So I could work with the subtleties that you know the relationships between the yellow, green, and red trees. I wanted to really be able to see that clearly without the influence of any color. And then secondly, I wanted to establish the creek, just get the basic gradation in there. Um, and here I'm using a rubber nib to scrape out some paint to kind of indicate some of the rock. Now I'm adding some paint back into those areas that I scraped out with the rubber nib. And uh, I don't always lift the paint out first. I could easily just lay these strokes on top of the base color, but sometimes it's just kind of fun and it's a quick way to establish a few shapes and sizes for these rocks under the water. And uh, you'll see, I, I rework these quite a bit back and forth throughout the painting, but this is a, a great way just to get something started. Now that I have the water blocked in fairly well, it's time to establish the big shadow shape on this back wall here. And I'm keeping the value pretty close to the value of the water, actually. Of course, it's much cooler and grayer. Uh, this is, I would, 
I would call this sort of a dirty purplish gray. Uh, but my thought here is, was right from the beginning to, to kind of carve the trees with this background color, you know, help establish the shape of the trees and the foreground rocks uh, in, in a kind of a negative drawing method, if you will. So drawing with the shadow against the lights. So again, just carving in around the tree shapes with our background color and getting this background plane in the proper value. You know, this is, we've reached a stage of the painting where we just need to make sure that the white canvas is covered and we've got values that we can measure against each other. Now I'm cooling off the background, adding a kind of a bluish gray on top of our purplish gray, uh, just to help push that wall back into the distance uh, as it is receding as we move to the left. And I'm thinking, you know, with big bold strokes, this I intend for this to be an a la prima painting, meaning done all in one session. And in fact, this painting was done in just over an hour. And so when you work like that, you really have to just make some decisions and move forward and not rework anything too much uh, or you, you destroy the integrity of those bold strokes. At this stage, I'm barely looking at the reference photo because as you can see here, it's very complex, the rocks in the foreground. And so I squint my eyes down real far and just pick the bigger shapes. And really at this point, I'm not even referring to the photo. I'm just painting whatever I see in my imagination. You know, this is mostly just from my mind's eye at this point. And, um, just moving things around and trying to find what makes sense to me, my own personal shorthand in the paint, if you will. I continue working on the water for a moment. Uh, I like to move around the canvas, as you can see. So just bringing up a few more details in the water before moving back onto the rocks at the shoreline. And again, with these rocks, there was just a lot of push-pull, a lot of changing, trying different shapes, also with the trees, uh, softening a few edges, adding some halftones or shadow color. And back to normal speed for a moment so you can see how I'm just taking my time thinking about the big shape and the edges of each individual tree. I like moving around the canvas, like for example, this green tree in the center and even the more reddish tree on the left. As time went on, I kept graying them down and kind of pushing them a little further back into the shadow area. Again, it's a small canvas and I want the, the yellow tree to really be the, the rock star. And uh, so, I just continued to sort of subdue everything else. Next, I'm working on some subtle transitions between light and shadow, uh, right as the rocks turn into the shadow. I'm wanting to show just a little indication of some shape so it's not completely abstract, uh, just to show that transition of how the wall uh, gets steep right behind the trees. And then continuing to refine the shapes of these trees, graying down the color a little bit and adding another little yellow tree on the left for balance. Here's kind of a quick little close-up, uh, just so you can see it straight on and hopefully without too much glare. Just so you can see a little bit of the brushwork, a lot of 
soft edges, lost edges, really thinking about a variety of edges, a variety of brush strokes, and keeping everything kind of blocky and simple. And the finished painting into the light. So I hope this was helpful in showing you one way that I will try to simplify a scene. The original thumbnail sketches, I think, helped me solidify the idea, but I really didn't know for sure what this was going to look like until I was more than halfway into it. And sometimes you need to do that. You know, you start with a partial idea, a spark of an idea, an inspiration, and you just go with it and see where it takes you. As you saw, this was completely wet into wet. There was a lot of push-pull, a lot of back and forth decisions being made. And I moved around the canvas quite a bit. I basically went from large brushes to small throughout the painting. And from softer to more refined toward the end. If you'd like to learn more, visit CodyDeLong.com. I'll see you in the next video.